We are live. Welcome, everyone, to another Incubator Weekly. I've got my trusty co-host, Anthony Campolo. How are you doing, Anthony? Hello. I'm doing good. How are you? Good. And we've got our guest today, Jojo Byte. How are you, Jojo Byte? Hello. I'm doing pretty well. How are you guys? Good. 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 So today we are talking about our incubator web wallet. Um, I think it's been probably over a month since we had you on last, uh, Jojo. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you give us a, a quick just synopsis of what the uh, incubator web wallet is from your perspective, and then I will give um, an overview from my perspective of why we're doing this and what how it fits into my my overall strategy so go ahead and give us an overview of what you're building sure so the incubator web wallet that i've been working on is more or less implementing a bunch of the tools that well it's implementing an interface using the tools that cool aj86 has built and so we've done a lot of work in the incubator to build a set of libraries that are pure vanilla JavaScript and um, aren't, aren't basically transpiled C libraries, which adds a lot of bulk to um, libraries when you import them rather than being multiple megabytes where, you know, sub -me megabyte, we're usually sub hundred kilobyte for a lot of our libraries. So it allows us to build modern web apps using a lot smaller of a footprint than uh, some of the stuff with Dash Core. Yeah, and and you said this is not using like compiled C libraries, but even it's not even using compiled JavaScript. It's not. Yeah, it's not transpiling at all. Not transpiled JavaScript. It's just native. Uh, fits right into your browser or Node environment. Works in both. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're bringing it into the, the web uh, environment, obviously, the browser environment. Um, so why don't we, um, since, since you talked about the libraries that it's incorporating as one of your first things, why don't we go ahead and start your screen share and bring in that code as well first so that people, the, the developers among us um, can see a little bit of what you're talking about. Sure. Uh, let's see. I guess I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So this is the open source repository under Dash Hive that uh, the wallet is in. And it's got all the code up to, I believe, the, the main focus of this last push has been on getting the transactions view showing. And so this is the branch we're working on right now that feature transaction view. Um, and we're also, oh, I should have pulled up the roadmap. Let me see if I can get that up. That might be helpful to show what we're working on. And it's not showing. Hmm, interesting. Maybe I won't show that right now. <laughs> wait, wait, there we go. All right. There we go. So we've got a lot in in the pipeline here this is the main focus that uh it's probably more in review now but there there's some more features that probably need to get added to it um specifically filtering based on contact and stuff like that and so um we've been knocking out a bunch of different things that just improve the wallet and improve the feel of it and uh the code here is we have one minor deploy step, but it's not really a build step. It just, it restructures the folder structures. But other than that, if you open up the wallet and you, you know, view source on the page, which I suppose I could do that, mm -hmm. um, it's not compiled at all. So you're seeing, you know, not even minified files. You don't even need source maps because, you know, like, nothing up our sleeves type of thing like yeah we're, we're showing you exactly what's there and it's a little bulkier because we're not minifying or gzipping anything but it's actually not that bad all things considered um yeah 
Yeah, normally when you would, um, these days when you would open up a uh, view source, view source is one of those things, which is kind of like old school. That's how a lot of, a lot of people 40 mm -hmm. plus years old would have learned how to do web development as they would, they would go to a website that was interesting and then they would right click on the website and they would say view source. And then they would just read the code that somebody has written and that's how they would learn how to develop. But these days, because most people, um, what so-called minify their code, um, it just looks like gibberish. And so you mm -hmm. can't really see what's going on there without looking at the source code, um, where the code that ultimately got delivered to your browser, where it came from, which is usually GitHub. So you're, you're, yeah. you're moving around a lot here and, and Sorry. people might be wondering but, what's going on. Th uh, this is an example of what view source looks like on GitHub. Like it's very not readable. So yeah. th they transpile all, all their code into a bunch of j different JavaScript. And if you click into any of these, you can't really get a good grasp of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so th that's why I was jumping around to, to kind of demonstrate that where this is ours. You've got all of the functions without it uh, kind of obfuscating any of the information. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, now let's, let's go ahead and just kick, jump right into a demo, I think would be a good thing to do just to get, give people an idea of where we're at with this wallet. It looks a little bit different than last time we looked at it. Mm -hmm. um, it does have some, I think the first thing that people might notice here is there's some icons with CrowdNode and, and Maya protocol. Those are future roadmap things that we hoped to get to last quarter, but um, weren't able to because we, we decided to reprioritize some of the things that we were working on. We needed a better transaction view mainly. Uh, last time we didn't have transaction views and that's, that's one of the main things that we worked on um, this quarter. But before that, we had a lot of work uh, dealing with um, <laughs> just the low level libraries that we had to go back to AJ and say, hey, can we, uh, this isn't user friendly, developer friendly enough. So can we move some of these uh, functions into the library and like different levels of the library? Uh, so a lot of work was done there, but why don't you tell us um, what we're looking at in terms of the transaction views. Um, and then after that, we will uh, go ahead with like having you pair with Anthony, uh, a friend request, and uh, we'll talk about that after that. Sure. So the transaction view now shows actually, it, it's a lot uh, easier to see now that I got the green versus red. So, you know, if something's been sent or received from someone, but it also says to or from right here. Yeah. Um, there, there's not much to it. You can click on these and it will open up the actual transaction. So you can view the transaction in the Dash Insight. But other than that, when you send a transaction, it updates here. So if I click here to Ryan and I say send, I'm just gonna do that full amount and say send. All right, and then it shows us how much, which of course it's not in the, uh, I, I've already sent too much, so I didn't have enough in there. But do we have oh, any more to work oh, with? Look at that. We, we've got an error. This is one of the recent things we've implemented is when we run into fee errors. Um, so surfacing, so, surfacing those yeah, errors sur was yeah yeah was something that we spent some mm -hmm. time on as well. That just troubleshooting the errors. So yeah, I don't so, think people know how difficult it is to write a wallet from scratch. I mean, even Dash Core Group's wallets, like the, the core wallet, that's a desktop wallet, the mobile wallets, they're both uh, forks of other wallets that had a lot of runway that were that was done before them. So like, you know, forked from Bitcoin Core and forked from Bread Wallet, or uh, I can't remember the Android one, but there's been a lot of work. It, it takes a lot of time to, to get all the all the things right with building a wallet from scratch, which we've done. Um, mm -hmm. So go ahead. Um, uh, do we have? Do you have some more funds to work with so that people don't have to look at grayed out text 
Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, I, I was going to send this one. So that one worked. I sent half of it rather than the full amount. Okay. And so I just popped open the transaction, but that's sending to Ryan and it uh, should update here, but it might take a moment. Or maybe a refresh. Yeah. Um, refresh should have grabbed it. So let's see. Interesting. Hmm. This is why this is this feature is still in development. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's why it's not merged to the main branch yet. I've tested this thoroughly uh, over the cu uh, past couple of days, and then you always run into errors in the demo. And of course, it always happens right on demo day. Yep. Yeah. So we got a problem with something not coming through. Let's see. So none of this, none of this would be, uh, you know, funds related. Obviously, it's just no. a view, uh, something, some issue with the, the view not being updated. Actually, I know. Yeah, I, I can tell what it is. Um, okay. I don't know if you want me to share that, but uh, one of the things that that happens is we've got web sockets to listen to balance changes and now the transactions and so when that initial uh i think i can actually fix it here real quick so when when the initial web socket runs and uh, detects a transaction the data that comes through the web socket is actually different from the data that comes through the um the rest api so that rest api ended up um or sorry the websocket api ended up putting data that doesn't actually match the format we were expecting and i thought this was actually taken care of but clearly it is not taken care of <laughs> all right well maybe maybe what we'll do is we'll, we'll move on to uh the pairing with anthony instead mm -hmm. and we'll see uh, we'll see if that one goes through smoothly. Mm -hmm. So walk us through it, uh, Jojo. All right. So I need to click a new contact here and get Anthony added into my list. So I need to copy this URI, or if he's able to see his screen and wanted to, he could scan that U uh, QR code. But I will drop this in him in uh, the chat for him. So Okay. Let's do and that. While you're doing that, I'll I'll describe what the the plan is. The plan is that at some point we would will have at, at the point where um, where platform is on mainnet, uh, which uh, maybe three or six months away from now, I'm, I'm guessing uh, we would up, have an upgrade path to doing these pair contact pairings on platform uh, and not just uh, through sharing links with with uh, one another. Um, Okay, I think I paired with you. Okay, can you share your URI so I can add you? Yes. Okay. So Anthony's creating a link yep. and sharing it with Jojo, and then Jojo's gonna copy that link, paste it into this field, and then add contact. Again, so now that's Yep. Things that, that would be improved with platform when it's ready. Um, and now you have a contact that is paired. So you've exchanged what you've done essentially is that you've exchanged some metadata, which is your username, your preferred username, mm -hmm. and an XPUB. And um, so now when you send to each other, you can be using different, uh, a unique address each time you send funds back and forth to each other and then the transactions would then be able to be filtered by eventually when the transactions feature is complete you'd be able to look at your contacts click on it and then see all the transactions from that contact and that 
that user experience would not change between now and when, if and when we do the platform uh, update, oh, if and when each user decides to do that, I should say, you'll probably always have the option to do this local, um, what's what I would consider more private um, contact pairing um, or uh, the public uh, on the Dash platform blockchain contact pairing. Mm -hmm. I think we need some more funds to work with. Let me let me check and see if I have any on my yeah. mobile wallet. So I do have this other wallet here. Let me do split screen. So this one was already paired, which it has a bit more funds, at least into the, you know, uh, lighter text area. So I can send a bit more funds here. So let's do that. Actually, I haven't refreshed this for a while. So let me refresh real quick. All right. So if I do Jojo and let's do point zero zero two. Maybe I'll do three. Let's do three. All right. And it's showing three, the network fee, and then the price of the send with the network fee. And we can open that up. And so now this is um, what was sent to the other. Wait, no, this is what was sent to the other wallet. And this is the change based on the UTXO that was used. And so this one should be up dated let's see yeah so oh that's interesting it went full screen there we go all right um oh it's because i'm zoomed in let me zoom out a little bit okay so we've got a bit more funds here we've got three there and uh we should be able to send to ryan Let's do a send, 001. Okay, so it's sending one and the fee, send, sweet. And then I can also go to Anthony here and say send, 001. Uh-oh, <laughs> overspend. So, uh, I think with the glitch that broke the transactions in, in this latest branch, it actually needs a refresh. So I just refreshed it and we'll see if it updated so that I can spend again. There we go. Okay. So now we've got these transactions out there. If uh, Anthony, and or Ryan want to check your wallets, you should. Yeah, I checked. I've got it. Cool. Yep. Yep, there it is. Okay, so I want to talk about I want to talk about the overall um, vision of of why we're why we're doing this once more. Um, this quarter, this coming quarter. I want to really focus on outreach to people outside of the Dash bubble, um, at de developers specifically. So, uh, at the at the end of last week, I had an opportunity to go attend um, a conference. The Anthony, did you hear about the uh, the Epic Web conference? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a Ken C. Dodds's new conference. Yeah. Yeah. It was actually, I, I didn't really realize it, but it was the first conference of the Epic web conference um, before he was doing remix conferences, I think. And, and now that he's doing his own thing, you know, he's rebranded it and the remixes it's one thing. And then Epic web is another thing. But anyway, I went to that conference. It was a great experience. I spoke with a lot of people, had my dash shirt on, um, talked to some people about Dash, but my, my main purpose wasn't necessarily to um, to be like preaching and, and teaching the good word of Dash to everybody. But um, when people would ask about uh, what was my what my shirt was about, I would talk to them about Dash. But I wanted to more just see what's going on on the ground in the web development scene, and that was a really good opportunity to do that. And 
this quarter, now that we have, or at least will shortly have more of these bugs worked out and transactions sh showing and, and more features of this web wallet, I want to um, reach out to these developers to get, get them trying these things uh, probably on screen. So I, I think I'm going to be doing more, like inviting people to Incubator Weekly, for example, or even during the week to try some of these tools out. So our web wallet, which is one of our focuses in Dash is like payments and using the traditional layer one blockchain. And then the other thing is platform. So those two things, I want to be reaching out to um, developers outside of the Dash ecosystem um, that may or may not be skeptical of cryptocurrency, give them a, uh, a try. You got to scroll down uh, Jojo by it because I, I'm seeing this that, that half point or scroll up actually. It was just midway into that into that number. Uh, so anyway, um, I lost my train of thought because of that. But um, sorry. But yeah, I want to I want to have them try out cryptocurrency in a way that they will be able to see this is actually very useful technology. Um, and one of the focuses would be then like pretty much what I found is. A lot of people there, you know, they're building they're building products. So they're building SaaS products um, uh, that require payments. So I want to see what is it um, about crypto? Like, what would they have to do? What would we have to say? Or what what, what product would we have to do to for these people to be interested in integrating cryptocurrency payments into their applications? Whether that's whether they have a SaaS product, SaaS meaning software as a service, where you're charging money for uh, to, to use software, a software service, um, why not integrate cryptocurrency and um, specifically Dash? Like, so creating um, maybe incentive programs for them to, to look into it, um, paying them to come on the show just to explore what we have in terms of payments and data storage. I don't think we're, we're there yet. So this isn't something that I would be doing um, in the first first month of the quarter probably, but um, something near the end of the quarter. Uh, but but yeah, and then like trying out these these integrations like CrowdNode, like Maya Protocol, um, and then just giving them a flavor of that. So that's, uh, I wanna make it as easy and low barrier, zero friction experience for them because they're not going to want to necessarily go to a website, download software. I mean, it's not it's not hard to download an app on your mobile phone or on your desktop, but it is it's just that much more friction. If they can just if I can give them a URL and say, here's a web wallet. All you have to do is go to this website and get started. I think that's a lower barrier to entry. So what what do you think, uh, Anthony? Do you think that do you think that the web uh, 2.0 traditional web developers, what do you think their overall experience would be with cryptocurrency at this point and with this wallet specifically? Um, I mean, I would say probably not a ton. And if so, their experience would be with a wallet like MetaMask is probably the one that they would most likely have used. So the idea of like having a wallet and the idea of using it to send funds back and forth, they might be familiar with that and have a general idea of how that works. If there's someone who's just kind of interested in, you know, newer technologies, they're, they probably come across that idea, but in terms of working with it in like actual development, that may be something that they're not as familiar with. Yeah. I, I think that they're actually very unfamiliar with this stuff. Um, very few people, that I rubbed shoulders with over that conference had really any idea of what was going on in cryptocurrency other than what they see in the headlines. And so that's, that's right. part of the problem is that they don't actually have hands-on experience with this. Um, so that's why I want to give them that hands-on experience and say, look, this is a product that's very easy to use. You don't even have to install a, a web, ex you don't even have to install an extension. All you have to do is go to this URL and, um follow a couple prompts like it's very very simple so uh jojo what other can you can you give us an idea of what what have been your challenges with building building this wallet um 
And what are you looking forward to coming up in terms of features? I am certainly looking forward to getting the uh, crowd node and Maya stuff in there. That's one of the main features that I always want. I believe uh, I advocated for that strongly when we were first uh, planning this out. Um, I also think the, uh, the, what is it? Gift card stuff. Um, I, I think that would be great to get in here where if you can just grab a gift card straight from the wallet, mm -hmm. um, that will be awesome in my opinion. That's um, another thing that, that would be good for these people that are uninitiated and uninterested in, in crypto right now. Cause a lot of them don't know like, Oh, I actually can use this in the real world. Mm -hmm. And this would be a super easy way to just say, here, pop open this wallet, um, save your seed phrase, and then I'm going to send you one dash, and then let's see what you can do with it. Send it back and forth to each other, buy a gift card. And then one other thing that I wanted to mention that I, I didn't want to forget, so I'm going to say it right now in the middle of your sentence. Um, another thing that I want to put into this wallet is creating a proposal on the network. Um, and that's something that uh, we have also on the side, AJ has has built um, a bridge to the RPC. Um, we built a library called Dash RPC recently in the last couple of weeks for uh, different purposes. But now that we have that in a JavaScript library, it would be really easy. And we have a wallet right here. It would be easy to say, Hey, I want to submit a proposal right here from the web wallet um, on the net on the dash for, to the dash treasury. I, I submit. I, it costs me one dash. Put a little markdown editor modal pop up that says you know just gives a description. It saves it to dash platform, and no messing with any other interfaces other than this this one web wallet. So that's that's um. That's something that would be a future integration in this quarter as well. And uh, there was one over, so there, there would be four, I guess. And we haven't talked about this uh, Jojo Byte yet, but so we have the crowd node, Maya protocol, Dash spend or CTX spend, whatever that ends up being branded as, that, that Ash mm -hmm. is very, very close to being, um, to launching, I think. And then once that's launched, we're gonna integrate that into this wallet as well. We should probably already put the, put the logo there um once we get uh, that yeah yeah i think i just don't have the logo that's why it's not there yet <laughs> yep and and all those i think are relatively simple now that we have the uh the nuts and bolts of transactions uh we still haven't got the transaction view working out uh seamlessly but that will be done shortly as well um uh, but yeah um what other thoughts do you have on that as i interrupted you uh jojo Are you there? Whoops, Mike got muted. Yeah. Uh, to continue what I was saying, um, one of the other things that I'm excited for, but uh, we haven't implemented yet, is um, we we do have this set up where it would be possible to send coins from. So rather than breaking up coins into new uh, UTXOs and and stuff like that, we could organized transactions so that when you go to send a contact it does a one-to-one -one pairing which would be it would be more uh akin to uh the coin join stuff and so you would be sending coins directly rather than breaking them apart um and i i am excited for that it's it's more low level it won't be as obvious to the user but uh, from a from a privacy, maybe not privacy, maybe even security. I, I, I think uh, AJ always says it's a security thing. Um, it will it will allow you to send to. So if I sent to Ryan and I have three different UTXOs and uh, the transaction will use all of them, it would send Ryan as much as possible use the minimum fee possible, but also try to keep the coins together so that he has more or less whole coins. And that's 
That's one of the things we've been working on. We've got it partially in here for the yep. cash send stuff. I was but just going to mention, yeah, that's yeah, something yeah. that we've already been working on, but it's not yep. seamless yet. Yep. It's an option so, thing right now. Mm -hmm. And I, I should mention also that uh, one of the things I've got AJ working on on the side is is doing CoinJoin in the browser and bringing, bringing that functionality to JavaScript environments so that you could use it in browser or Node. And uh, that is one of the purposes is that if you if we have that cache send feature that you're talking about that we haven't really discussed in detail, I don't want to discuss it too much in detail yet until it's it's working seamlessly. Um, but then if you combine that with a coin join as well, you'd have excellent privacy right from the browser as well. Mm -hmm. And or if you want to call it security either way. So. Yep. Uh, what else? Um, I think, yeah, go ahead. Do you have anything else that you wanted to say about, you didn't mention any of the challenges, but, um, that you've been facing, but, uh, did you want to oh, say anything about that? Yeah, yeah, I can, I can talk about challenges. Um, <laughs> cause there's been plenty. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially as we, we got to the MVP stage and we're, we were trying to get to stage one, we have added enough features to this that there are things we just didn't know until we combined everything to uh, look out for. And um, there has been a lot of underlying stuff where it's it's a little harder for the end user to see, but especially with sending the transactions and stuff, there's fee, fee issues and um, you, you can have weird scenarios where because you want to send a smaller amount, you end up uh, using multiple UTXOs and because it's using multiple UTXOs, the fees go up. So even though you're trying to like, there's just these weird edge cases we didn't know to account for, or at least I didn't know to account for that maybe AJ has in, in the uh, command line version. And mm -hmm. so th there were things like, for example, that were done in the command line version that AJ built, but weren't moved over to the library. So once I ran into it, we had to get with AJ and go, okay, where is this function? Why, why isn't this working? And uh, there's been stuff like that. There's also been, I mean, I'm literally looking at this transaction thing and uh, I apparently flip-flopped the from and to because it's saying I sent funds, uh, I sent funds to Anthony, but it's saying I received funds from Anthony. And same for Ryan. So I somehow flip flopped the uh, uh, transactions here. So that actually should be a two, and it should be minus, not plus. So yeah, so there's stuff like that where um, that that's an easy, more more or less innocent. It's literally just reading the transactions and flip flop the values. But there's been there's been just a lot of underlying stuff to the libraries and uh, that are complex i mean this is cryptocurrency so well work it's complex. not just cryptocurrency it's it's working with uh utxo or coin models as i like to call it uh mm -hmm. it's much different than something in like ethereum land where you're you have an account model where your funds just it's it's more like a bank account um and all the problems that come with that as well like when you have one bank account it's very easy to just look up and see coins moving in and out of the that funds in and out of that account increasing or decreasing the balance you have almost zero privacy with that if you're not using something like um tornado cash or some other um privacy preserving protocol on any kind of evm chain when you're dealing with utxos the digital cash um coins like bitcoin litecoin dash um it's just harder to develop uh, because you're because you're dealing with these inputs and outputs, and I think a lot of people probably don't understand how how difficult that is when creating transactions. Um, but let's look forward to um, what's what what do you have coming up? Um, what do we have on our roadmap? Let's let's take a look at that uh, for for this wallet. So uh, the things that are next up on the list are this ready column here. And so we've got a shareable dash URL. 
So that is connected to um, this URI could also be a link. So you would just copy and paste the link you're wanting someone to pair with, which will make things quite a bit easier. So that's high on the list, third-party integrations. Um, that is these uh, CrowdNode, Maya, I've actually got it here, let's see. Um, dash spend, bit refill, and there might be another. So what, what was the reasoning between CrowdNode and Maya being save and what would go under earn, Ryan? Oh, well, we, we haven't really ironed that out specifically how we're going to present those things to the users. Mm -hmm. I, I just thought of potentially categorizing them under um, what they do, like they help you save money or they help you spend money or they help you earn money. Mm -hmm. um, but there are just lots of different integrations that we can that we can bring into the wallet. Um, mm -hmm. Under earn, we would have like what I talked about earlier today, um, the proposal integration so, so straight into the Dash Treasury. I think mm -hmm. one of the, if we look higher level here, one of the issues that we have in Dash is that we don't have enough competition. We don't have enough developers that are competing to bid down prices um, and provide value to try to, to try to provide value. And so I think making it easier to submit proposals to the network, even as a solo developer um, and saying like, I would like 50 Dash to do X or I would like 100 Dash to do X, Y, and Z, just making that whole process a lot easier. And I think bringing that into the web wallet would be uh, a step toward that. So under earn, we would have treasury proposals under there. Mm -hmm. um, we could also have other, we could also bring in uh, our own bounties from the incubator of like, okay, th these are ways to earn Dash in the, in the Dash incubator. Mm -hmm. So, However, we decide the, the user experience we want to put on that, whether it's just like straight integrations um, and not categorized or whether we categorize them. I haven't decided that yet, but um, mm -hmm. if anybody watching has an idea of another integration that they'd like to see and uh, prioritize, let me know. But otherwise, we have our work cut out for us in that area as well. Mm -hmm. Um, to continue on, we've got uh, so, some more technical stuff. It, it, uh, this is a uh, quality of life thing that is complicated. So right now we've got the only way to get access to send to your main wallet to fund is from right here. Uh, actually, it's not the only way anymore. So we want to get rid of this. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, you can actually just do receive here. Yep. and sends directly to your wallet. Um, but we didn't originally have that. So this needs to get removed essentially, and it will just be editing your profile from there on out. Um, we've got mobile improvements, but actually some of these were done. Um, I have I had done several fixes while, while implementing transactions to get this to work in mobile. So mm -hmm. some of the mobile improvements might actually be done. Um, we've got the contact pairing QR share flow improvement um, that is related to this same stuff. This mm -hmm. is not exactly intuitive. Um, yeah. it, it, it's okay, but like even <clears throat> it should be it should be easy enough that a user knows exactly what's happening when they yeah. first see it. And it's not it's yet. Yeah. And part of the reason why I haven't prioritized that yet is it works for one. And depending on how quickly platform comes out, it may not be something that we need to think too much about. Mm -hmm. Although um, I would like to give users the option to do contact pairing either way. So um, yeah. we would do, we would definitely do need that on the list. So Yep. Um, yeah, I think that's, uh, in case anybody wasn't sure about the mobile part that you were talking about, this wallet can be used as a mobile wallet quite simply um, by going to the web address, go, going to the, the URL of the wallet and then installing the app as a progressive web app. And then 
you would have an icon either on your Android phone or your mobile phone or your um, your Apple phone that looks and feels very much like a mobile wallet or a mobile app. Um, and so you have to design it in a way that it, it has a different view in mobile. And um, you've done a pretty good job of that, it looks like, as you as we're looking at here. Yeah. So this is showing off some of what's been accounted for. This is where it's it's decent. Like it's okay. There there are things that could definitely be improved here, um, but it's certainly not the best mobile design ever. But it's certainly not the worst. Um, yeah, it, it, it does make it usable. But our main focus with the MVP and we're just at so stage one was our MVP. We're now in stage two. Uh, we did not intend to include any mobile in it. So the fact that it has any mobile support is, I, I think, a good thing. Yeah. Um, and that was mostly because I wanted to test it on mobile. So mm -hmm. we brought some of those things up higher in the list. Uh, I, I would have liked to have gotten further into the integrations, like with CrowdNote and Maya and other things. But mm -hmm. I was I was the problem. I, I wanted to have a better mobile experience just when I was testing it. So mm -hmm. we did bring some of that stuff up in the priority uh, yep. at the expense of other things. But, but that that is why we have mobile improvements it, is it's worthwhile now that we're past the MVP to get this flushed out a bit more and make it. I mean, the reality is we will have mobile users. People will try to use this from their cell phone and it should work at least reasonably, you know, w with a reasonable degree of certainty that it will work. Right. Yeah. Um, All right. Anthony. Yeah. You've been pretty quiet today. Any questions about what you've seen so far? Comments, uh, concerns? Um, I mean, I really like the fact that it's just like a URL that you can go visit. It's basically a website. It's not really like you were saying a extension. I think that definitely helps because when you need to download like a browser extension, some people may be like, well, what's it going to do? Is it going to like, you know, be stealing all of my traffic and tracking me around the web and things like that? And you don't have to download an app. So I think um, that's all really good stuff. Yeah, yeah. extensions can be scary. Uh, you give when you download an extension, it can have significant privileges on your machine. Oh, yeah. Literally, it could log all your passwords. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So another thing that we haven't talked about today is uh, the potential to deliver this app through decentralized um, methods like IPFS. And we talked a little bit about uh, IPFS in previous episodes, um, but I want to bring that all together into how, how do we deliver this mobile wallet in a way that's the most secure that people can trust uh, trust the most. But in the end, um, you know, this is a web, a web wallet and all things web, you know, you're, you're dealing with pretty vulnerable uh, environment. So in all of this stuff, I would definitely only use this for like convenience purchases at, at conven convenience levels of um, funds. So you're not going to throw, you're not going to throw like $10,000 in this wallet. You're going to, you know, treat it like a, like your wallet, like your physical wallet. Maybe you put 20 bucks. Sometimes you put a hundred bucks in there, but yeah. um, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't trust anything much more. Uh, yeah. At least at this, at this phase, while we don't have a, a super solid security. Um, it would be like the wallet you keep on you. You're probably not going to keep a thousand dollars in your wallet, but you might keep a hundred. Yeah. Or it, the the other thing I can think of is, for example, if you're going to the movies and we've got the the uh, gift card stuff in there, like there's, I think, uh, Cinemark and AMC theater gift cards and stuff. So if you know you're going to the movies, you've got a date night or whatever, you can stick, you know, 50 bucks or 100 bucks in there. And then when you get to the theater, you can actually get a gift card for uh, that theater and, you know, get all your snacks and stuff straight up using Dash. And so 
I, I think that that will be a great thing going forward once we've got the gift cards integrated. I know I, I used to do that with, um, what was it, Dash Direct. Like yep. I had done that several times with Dash Direct and I thought that was awesome because suddenly the cryptocurrency is not, you know, as esoteric as it may have otherwise been. Yeah, yeah, it's actually usable for something, not just an investment. All right, guys, let's let's wrap this up. Unless anybody has any closing thoughts, any anybody? Nope. Nope. All right. Well, we will keep you posted on the the status of this throughout the you know throughout the next uh, months, and we will probably I'll try to have you back on JoJo in let's say I don't know four to six weeks. Uh, get an update on on where we're at. And Sounds until good. then, uh, we'll see you next time. All righty. See you all.